I'm gonna give you a red hot tip. We've just had the biggest rookie maneuver we've ever done. We've left Brisbane at 2.30 on a Friday afternoon to head down to Grafton. And honestly, we've been going now, it's 4.30, two hours, and we're barely at Koolangatta, which is, I'd say, 80 kilometers away from home. Absolute shocker, we're in the worst traffic. We've just got moving now. Apparently, once we get over the border, it'll widen out a bit, so we're heading to Grafton. We're probably gonna get there in the dark now. I don't know if we're gonna be able to film too much tonight, but we will see you in the morning and show you our campsite, because apparently it's pretty spectacular on the side of a creek or a river, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be good. So join us then. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're down camping with Tino and his mates, Ando and I, uh, outside of Grafton, in uh, what is a national park, free camp, can't book it, just rock up and stay. It looks sensational, but a six hour drive from Brisbane yesterday, Friday afternoon, did it really badly. Anyway, we're here now, so let's have a look around this cool spot. Couch for the for the bumpy ride, man. What was this? This is a butcher's shop, mate. Huh? Yeah. Where they used to hang all the meat in that. So we're at an old township called Del Morton, um, and it's just derelict now. It's nobody lives here anymore. All the old buildings are still here, so that was just the butcher shop that we were just in. And uh, there's another couple of buildings over here we're going to have a look at. You didn't believe it? In the middle of this old town, there's a tennis court. Who would have thought that? It's like the only building, building, the only thing here really. There's nothing else for miles. So apparently this tunnel was handmade. Like the, the first convicts were told to dig this out by hand and chisels. Let's see if they can get through here without falling into the water. So uh, this was hand dug. This was all hand dug. Yeah, yeah. The start with yeah. 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 this little rock wallaby just hanging out a bit cool down in there for him right and up talk us through what's today's menu well my good friend and fellow followers today we are doing beef brisket so firstly I'm just chopping up some onions here's our beef brisket here big uh, what is this three kilo brisket from uh, Bay Gourmet Meats down in our uh, Birkdale shopping center there uh, possibly the best meat you'll get in Brisbane, if not definitely the Redlands. So big shout out to Danny down there for looking us up with this. So pretty much what the plan is today, going to chop up some onions now, get them all, just chop them in half and then slice them up. Um, and we're pretty much going to do it camp oven style. So we've got the fire going all day, so we we're just pretty, pretty much monitoring it. Um, a couple of onions in, some vegetable stock, and garlic. Put some beer in there. Beer. Beer. Um, the perks of well, this camping trip that we're on now that you're watching, it's not really the most intense four-wheel drive trip. This is more of just like a sit back and drink lots of beers trip, which is also and really swim good. in the creek and swim in the creek, which is right there. So <laughs> uh, yeah, so just preparing some onions now, getting them. You don't want too thick, um, but we'll go. We're just going two full brown onions, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much. Pretty much what we're up to. 
Rightio, so the main ingredient to a uh, camp oven, oh dear, camp oven beef brisket is the camp oven. So here's our trusty old one. Many, many meals have been inside this camp oven. It's trusted, it's verified, so we're going to use it again. Uh, so pretty much, we're going to get our big slab of beef brisket here. Don't worry about the blood, it's all good. Look at that. That is nice. Look at all that juice on it. So we're gonna whack that straight in, right there. Right, yeah, so now we've got our two brown onions all sliced and cooked. They're pretty much just gonna go straight in. Just all like that. Spin them around, you know, in big chunks, like, you know, spread them around so they cook nice and evenly. Just get your hands in there. Ooh, well and good like that. Get them all around, looking. We're gonna add just a little bit. You can use just normal garlic. Crusher up, but um, we didn't have a garlic crusher, so we're gonna use a paste. So you just want to go like a little bit, like ish. Yes. We got, we got a spice drawer or not? Yes, the spice drawer. Open that. Get, open the pantry up. Oh, okay. And there's a tub inside it. Oh. A little spice drawer in here. Look at that. And the paprika is. The one right. that says paprika on it. We don't have paprika. Oh, we got paprika. It's just right there, just easy to get to. And we're just gonna... Oh, that's heaps. Then, we're just gonna get some Campbell's vegetable stock. You can use beef, of course. Uh, I probably wouldn't use chicken. <laughs> use beef. <laughs> and then, we'll just... Hulk Hogan put this bloody cap on. Now, <laughs> it is a three kilo, three kilo brisket, so we're putting the whole bottle in to get it nice and moist. Yeah, oh yeah. Just like that. And then work that into meat. Give your meat a good old rub. <laughs> yeah, boy. Now, we're just gonna, because we're at camp for the rest of the day, we're just gonna like monitor it. So if you know we see it drying out and stuff, we'll just add. We got another box, so we'll just add more if we need to down the track. But this should get us definitely started off. Now, bit of texture, bit of flavour. Trust your Great Northern Original. Find it at any of your. Now you can never just waste a full beer. Always got to have a first sip of it, and then we're just going to go in like that. Don't think, oh, it's too watery, oh, it's gonna be yuck. No, the beef is gonna just soak up all the juices, making it nice and juicy, pull apart when you open it. Right, and uh, that's pretty much it. So, I'm gonna take you over to the campfire now and show us how we set it up there. Rightio, so, we've got a, because we've only got like sort of just big logs here, there's not too many coals going on, so, we're just gonna set it. Just right there. Just a little bit, that'll keep it going. Don't have to be in the constant flame the whole time, getting super hot. Just want like a low and slow heat. So later on during the night, when we got a few more coals, we'll be able to put the coals on top, but every now, every hour or something, we'll just keep turning it around, even heat. Should be all good. We'll keep you updated. I know, while we're slaving over a hot camp oven, these fellas are down here swimming. That's not even fair. Because it is bloody hot today down in Dad Kissy Country. Hey. Oh, that was so anti climactic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I didn't take my hat off, but. <laughs> what are you, winded or something? <laughs> <laughs> Back to it! Oh.
been about three hours by now. Um, as we said, we've turned it every hour or so. So this is what we're looking at at the moment. trying to put out the peanut gallery. It's getting trickier by the hour, but we're trying. How's that handle going for you? <laughs> yeah, you working it out? Five minutes later. What's happened? Um the sun decided to go away. I wanted to go for a swim, but I don't want to get wet. All right, we're back. Just flipping it over. We've been about five hours now. Ish. Oh. Oh, you better pick it up. It's heavy. Oh. Keep that heater up. If you could smell. This would be amazing. But you can't smell because it's a video, so it does smell good. Trent, why are you on this channel? <laughs> Situation update. We were planning to do so much more content. The brisket is still cooking, but the rain has set in for probably the last three hours, so there's probably not much we can do. We're just under cover at the minute. Um, the boys are over there under their cover, and there's more boys over there. Um, yeah, so... We'll see you when we have cooked the brisket and hopefully that'll be okay. Not ideal conditions at all. It is piercing down rain. And the best thing is, we're on a cover. Not the best thing, the brisket is still out there on the fire. So, we're gonna go and get it. All right, go. Like the wind builds up. I don't know how much we'll see. It's pretty dark out there. Come on, here he comes. All right, he's got it, and he's coming back. Here he comes. All right. You got the brisket, put it on the ground. How'd you go? Right, yeah, so uh, typical behavior. I'm slaving over the fire all day. Uh, and we just come to the nice pointy end. We're actually about to serve it up soon. And uh, look who shows up. Buddy Trent, every single time. Uh, so look, all well and good to be cooking this all day, but what you gotta make sure of, you gotta rest it at the end. Yes, it probably will taste kinda nice if you just pull it off and get straight into it, but this will bloody sew you out. So what you gotta do, wrap it a few times. We're gonna go three tonight. So what you do is just get your standard uh, airfoil, Get a sheet like that. Don't be, don't be afraid. Now, usually you'd have this on a table next to you, but we're just gonna bloody, we're just gonna stuck it straight in my hand. So you're gonna reach in. Oh, that's, that's so hot. A smarter person would have grabbed the outfoil and brought it closer to the ground with like tongs and. And then you just want to wrap this up. Like a Christmas Day present. Didn't baby. you think that would be hot? That would have been really hot. Yeah, but like, it's like it's been on fire all day. Yeah, but like six hours was it on fire for? I'm also full of rum, so I didn't want that up. <laughs> but yeah, so that's one wrap. I'm gonna go one more. Why are you wrapping it up, Ando? So um, you want to wrap it up to maintain the heat, pretty much. Just let it rest, you mean? Let it rest, yeah. maintain the heat. This is shocking wrapping. We may have to go at four. So how long do we leave that for? I'm going to leave for about half an hour. Right now. And what are you going to well, do in the meantime? 
half an hour accumulates to probably three or oh, it's a little pacey setting but probably two beers at this stage ish maybe three starting on the third so if that's any factor for you look you're probably I'm going over three because I'm shocking wrap I'm going to tuck it in and then you're going to cook some hot chips in the meantime aren't you? <laughs> that's what he was aiming for right yeah, so that's it there we're going to leave that for half an hour in the meantime, we're going to cook up some steak, uh, steak cut chips and uh, get right, it rolling. That off. Right. That's us done here now. So we're going to let this rest for about half an hour. In the meantime, we're going to grab the air fryer out. We're going to cook some chips. It'll be perfect timing. It'll be ready to hook in. He's acting, See you soon. He's acting like he's been cooking to this and he's getting some. <laughs> Have you ever seen the rain So obviously, you know, we're not just going to brisk it by itself, we're going to have some chips, because chips go really well made, don't you? Yeah, he agrees. So, one way to do that, when you're in, out in the bush toughing it out, is uh, like on an air fryer. Pretty hard. So, we'll wax baking paper down, saves you the hassle of trying to clean it up after. My good friend Trent actually taught me this. It's not like you've ever cleaned up after yourself anyway, <laughs> have you? Right, yeah. So, for the viewers out there, we're just going some beer battered chips from McCain. Can't really go wrong. So, how long you put them in for, man? 200 degrees for 12 minutes, I, I decided to go with. <laughs> <laughs> just like that, off she goes. Little, uh,. Little unit from BCF, if you're wondering where we got this from. Um, pretty cool little unit. Oh, really? Right, yeah. Here's the few times now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, give it a little look. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, stay tuned for the result at the end. <coughs> Rightio, it is finally time to open up this bag here. So, it's currently 8.30 at night. He knows you have to arrive in time. Oh. <laughs> Standard backs. <laughs> What's it taste like? Rightio, yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, I'm a oh, taste of it. It's like under. Christmas Day. Oh, oh. Mouth is watering a little bit. Oh, it's just it's so hard to pick up because it's. <laughs> Come on! Get into her. There's no thoughts. You almost just ripped this thing. It's just bloody. Oh, that would do. Spot on. That would do. Nailed that. Absolutely nailed it. Mm. Mm. Now, for future references, if Trent ever <laughs> brings up my cooking. <laughs> Compared to the previous episodes with his bread making. No. <laughs> remember this. Remember this, please. Righto. Plenty of attackers. Gonna carve up this for a little bit for a bit of everyone. We've got some chips. Put on a burger, a bit of coleslaw. I'll show you what it turns out to be. Righto, so it was a rainy night all night. Well, anyway, the campfire went out. We probably could have ended up cooking the brisket for a couple hours longer, but the fire went out, so we were sort of stuffed. That's it. That's the end of our little camping weekend down outside Grafton. Uh, we'll be back, but with better weather. In the meantime, please do subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.